You know him, you love him, you love to hate him, Mr. Michael Rosenbaum! Oh look, it's Mike, everyone. Oh Lord. I feel like we're missing somebody. I feel like we're missing somebody. Oh look at that! really kind of taught me how to be a good person. Um, and so when I heard about the show, I got very anxious. I got very nervous about it because I was like so protective of that character. Um, and, but when I saw that first episode and saw what you guys were up to, I just kind of breathed a sigh of relief. And I, I was able to just kind of embrace it as the Superman. For You're welcome, Jeremy. Exactly. That's what I was You're saying. very welcome. Well, I'm sure everybody out there is trying to feel kind of feel the same way with that, but I mean, were you guys feeling any of that pressure when the show first started, that this is going to be this new iteration of this classic character that people hold so dearly? Krista? Krista? Yeah, this Krista. This is what they're going to do. Krista. This is the thing. Spotlight then goes on her. Wow, look at that. There we go. There we go. Oh, my hat. Jeez. Somebody saved me. <laughs> Jesus! attached to anything. This is a new version, a new story, and it was really about fo focusing on that. Yep. And I couldn't focus on Superman, I had to focus on Clark. Yep. Yep. I, was, I was a big horror movie fan, so I always watched horror movies as a kid, and I wasn't really in the comic books and all that stuff. But I appreciate that, that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So no pressure? No pressure. No pressure. Uh, yeah, look, for me, doing the show, yes, there was pressure. Because everybody's like, oh, Gene Hackman's the best uh, Lex Luke. I was in line one time at a convention. Tom knows this. I think you were there. And this guy waits in line for 20 minutes. And he finally gets up there and goes, Gene Hackman was the best Lex Luthor ever. And I go, I agree with you. And he goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sauntered off. I was like, yeah, but uh, you know, the great thing is that the internet wasn't as prominent as it is yeah. now. So I think that helps thing. us. Yeah, and being in Vancouver, we were kind of, we, we didn't have to deal with all that stuff. I think if we were in other cities or something, people would mob us, and, uh, and there was an expectation to be, oh, Christopher Reeves is, is, is Clark Kent, and like, Gene Hatman's Lex Luthor, and we didn't really have to deal with that or read comments so much on the internet, as now you can see, people before you even do a movie, he sucks, this is the worst casting ever. What are they thinking? And like, we didn't really have to experience that, and thank God. I, what, I, what I found with everyone along the, along the journey was everyone took the responsibility of, of performing and, and being an actor, and that was taken very seriously. But I, I don't recall anybody coming in and, and, and really playing to the Superman of it all. Um, I remember Martian Manhunter came on the show, and I really didn't know who 
the character, who the character was. Which was great because that character explained to Clark who he was. And you I was mean, like, Man, Jean this Jean? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Jean. And I was like, this character is awesome. So I got to kind of learn as it was happening. Um, but I think there was a lot of like, you know, show up ready, let's get the work done and have a good time. Um, so the pressure thing, you know, pressure to perform is always going to be there a little bit when it comes to acting, hopefully. Otherwise, you just don't care what you're doing. So, so you're right, a, Michael? Well, you're also on a big, exactly. <laughs> well, you're also on a big show. There, look, we're lying. There is pressure. We've just, we are not lying. We've moved to a new topic slightly. We have? Yeah. Well, the pressure of like a huge studio yeah, there's the pressure. show, there's pressure. You know, the cameras, there's the lighting, everything's top notch, so you kind of want to be great. You're hoping that you can keep your job. So what happened? Well, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> we're here. Show's over. I'm just like we ran out of stories, guys. <laughs> like Clark had to move on. Like that. That's the. That's the. That's How many episodes did you do? Uh, like 220 something. That's so many episodes. Of one show. Yeah. 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 But you know it's great. And by the way, Supernatural. There's two of them. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. Well, what's great is that we see kids coming up to us like young kids, and they're starting to watch Smallville. So it's a whole new generation. These guys right here, he loves Lex. Raise your hand. Yeah! There he is. Uh, so it's, it's nice to see you can watch it on Hulu and revisit all of it. The, the Blu-rays are out, and so it's nice. Yeah, well, uh, Michael, I mean, you said you think Gene Hackman's the best uh, Lex. I'm sorry, but I disagree with you, sir. Um, uh, I think you're the best Lex. It's funny because that would have been really funny if you're like, I disagree with Eugene Hackman's that Kevin Spacey's. Kevin Spacey's. <laughs> <laughs> the only, the only uh, pushback I got on it from many of my friends was like, oh, well, Clancy Brown in the animated was great. And I was great. like, Clancy Brown is amazing. But what, what you were up to with that character, like just the struggle of trying to do the right thing, that was something I wasn't prepared for in this show. And the bond that Clark and Lex had. I um, think the biggest struggle was Lana having to marry Lex. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that was a I think that was a uh, You know what, though? We had a lot of fun. We, like, you know, she was really young when we started the show. I was 23, you were 13. <laughs> <laughs> you were much older, Michael. I was at 27, you were 17. One more year up. I was, you were 18? <laughs> yep. And I was 27. But I was really 19 when we started shooting. Right, and then as she started to grow into a woman and I was slowly turning into a man. And then at the end of the show, we got along, we just had respect for each other, we really enjoyed it. And those episodes when we were together were kind of fun. They were a lot of fun. I don't know where this I don't know. <laughs> you just go on, it doesn't matter, we just gap. Just go, go, go. But no, I, you, you're, you're slowly carrying. becoming a man. <laughs> I'm still going, I'm still struggling. The struggle is real. Well, but I tried to explain to somebody when I was saying why I thought Lex, your, your Lex is the best, is, is that through all of those seasons that you're on the show, it's just this really slow unraveling into the, the evil Lex that we know from the comics. And it makes the, that journey so much more heartbreaking because we root for you so hard in that show. And I don't know, like, was that apparent to you right from the start that, like, you, you had a very different version of this character that you were trying to bring to life? Well, I just knew I had a long time before I became evil, and, you know, it would be very boring if episode one I was evil. There's there nowhere to go. <laughs> well, but, I, I think you, I, you've, you've embraced the idea that maybe Lex is the hero of the story. I think you that was a lot of great story. Yeah. Yeah. If you would have lied to me from the beginning, things might have been different. Clark lied so much. Clark lied so much! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write it. <laughs> but I just knew I had a long time before I was evil. So sometimes in the beginning, I would say, "Hey guys, this is this is re really evil." They go, "We know you're going to play against it, so just play against what was ever written." You know. So if somebody's like, you know, Lex is, is infuriated. I I wouldn't be as angry, or there'd be some kind of light to it, or you know, I don't know. 
No, there was always these great moments, this like little brother, big brother relationship that you guys had. Yeah. Um, it was one of those episodes of the first season where you gave him the concert tickets, and then, like right when you give them to him, there's just this look on your face, like, come on, man, come on, man. I just thought like they really are playing this like brothers, and it's I can if, if this goes where I think it's gonna go, it's gonna kill me, <laughs> you know, and, and it really yeah. did. Yeah, well, that's cool. It was cool that we started out, you know, sort of like a creepy guy with, with hanging out with high school. Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it is weird. It is so weird. Lana, how's your first day at the talent? <laughs> well, I don't think you're allowed to talk to her. Lex is just waiting for Lana to become legal. <laughs> <laughs> recently, I, I, recently, I remember I came across this scene at the talent. It's, it's like Lana's first day and Lex comes in, he orders his cappuccino or whatever. And at the end, you know, Lana gives Lex his, and he, the drink and you drink it. It's like, Clark goes, is that what you ordered? And you're like, <laughs> I, I, I'd like to think that I think that was that was an improv that he did, but they stayed in there and it was great. There was always a little bit of that. that was kept it yeah. kept it fun. Well, uh, Kristen, uh, obviously your character is so amazing in the show, and I love yes. <laughs> what I especially loved about your character is that they avoided the the trope of many high school like type of settings, which was you know, a popular girl that then like sees the light, so to speak. You always played her with this really good warmth and moral compass, I thought, from the very beginning, um, which makes it so much greater why when we get that slow romance build to you and Clark. I mean, it's there from the start, but um, I don't know. I don't know if I even have a question. I just wanted to, to compliment you because you. The, I, think the, I think that in my life- made the kryptonite skin so much worse. Well, I, okay, can I go there because- <laughs> I, I, I tell everybody I meet, I don't know if I've ever had more of an emotional reaction to TV than your exit from that show. Um, I really don't know. Um, the, the, that scene, just trying to get to her and not being able to, I, I, like, please tell me what it's like on that set when you're doing that because I was losing my mind during that scene. That scene, there was, because we were both crying, there was a lot of snot, is what I remember. <laughs> you don't remember? I don't. I don't, I remember other, I, re, I remember that, was, here's the thing. You a different scene too. You always remember the scene in the alley. Yeah. And I remember the scene in the loft. I don't remember the scene in the loft. Yeah. The scene in the loft, that's uh, all. Because right. yeah. I remember the scene in the alley, because if I remember correctly, it was your last scene. My last scene. day, yeah. And you were like, so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys ever, like, oh, after this, I'm, I get to leave. <laughs> Did you ever get that feeling? Because I have the same thing when the show ended. Sorry. Did you guys ever make love? A lot of love. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yes, they did. Yeah, you don't remember if she does? <laughs> <laughs> There's probably a dream sequence somewhere. Oh, oh, the earthquakes! Oh, the greaser thing, right? Is that what it was? Like yeah. the, the 50s? The whole 50s thing? That's when Lana gets I love your gesture. <laughs> 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 That's that is near the end. Yeah, where Lana gets her powers and uh, I believe Lois, or no, it's uh, uh, Chloe comes over and says like, oh, did you feel the earthquakes and stuff? And you're right. like, oh, that was us. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna watch this. I'm gonna watch this show. <laughs> but no, I mean like that, that had to be incredibly emotional. Like that, but that, it, it was, it's a story beat that works. Like it was a story beat that was natural, flowed that way, you know? Like, and I, I just, I, I couldn't believe it. Was. What, I, what I really, the, one of the, the thing that I like when I watch things is when there's love uh, relationships in any thing I watch, the characters have to be worth it to the other one. That's, you know, yeah. like when, the, when one character's just not worth it, then I'm just like, this whole thing sucks. And I think the Lana and Clark, they, they, to me, they both felt worth and worthy of each yeah. other. Um, yeah. And I think that uh, they did a good job. I think the show did a good job of Importless. making that happen. Make love. <laughs> what did I say? Sort of. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this too. Um, I do love, uh, Kristen, that uh, you were just in uh, the Reacher series. Yeah. I want to yeah. really yeah. give you a chance for that. With, with Alan. Yes, with Alan. That's exactly what I was going to ask you. It's just like I found that so 
so funny that like when you were there, I was like, ah, oh, it's, it's Obama in, in, uh, in AC right there again. What, yeah. what was it like working with him again? Like, uh, I don't think I ever had scenes with him you originally. Didn't. You yeah. didn't, because I directed that episode of Obama. Right. Oh. You weren't yeah. yeah, so I don't, I didn't have scenes with lots of people, but it was really fun working with him. He's a fun guy. He's got a lot of energy, um, and he was great in that role in Reacher. I thought he was really wonderful. He was, he, he was funny, and him and Willa had great chemistry, and they were yeah. really fun to watch. If you're not watching Reacher on uh, Amazon, guys, it is an amazing show. Um, oh, no. Did you guys just, like, <laughs> tap out? Tapped out. This is tag team wrestling. This is, my, like this is my favorite part of the show. Watch this. Diarrhea. <laughs> How do you say explosive diarrhea? <laughs> <laughs> the, other, the other lady is so happy, but she just got out of here. Oh, oh man. Kristen, that was like the biggest sigh of all time before. You've done this before, haven't you, yes, Michael? This is common. <laughs> Well, uh, Michael, I told you backstage that I had to ask you about it. Um, if you have not listened to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum, <laughs> people, you're, you're missing probably the best podcast that there is out there. Um, I, I, I just want to, I mean, I know you know the pandemic happened and it, and it went, but like the conversations you get to have with everyone get so in depth there. Um, and from that, I learned a lot about your uh, philanthropy as well. Um, just like finding people who need love and support and just going out and finding that. Like, it, was that a natural genesis from that show? Or is that you know, I, I started doing about? the podcast because at first somebody goes, you have a good voice, you should do a podcast. <laughs> and I was like, all right, I'll try it. And then I was like, I don't, uh, and then I started to become more vulnerable and genuine and just let it go. And I think that's when people sort of gravitated towards the show and, and guests would open up more. They would, when I'm opening up about my dysfunction in my life and my anxiety and my things. There's so much to talk about. There's so much to talk about. <laughs> they would open up and I think that's, the show's evolved into something that I love and I you know, take very seriously and to the heart. And I think a lot of people who listen to it. So if you haven't listened to it, they're both on it numerous times. It's a lot of fun. It's called Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. It's on Spotify and Apple. Michael has always yeah. cared about like helping people. Even when we were on Smallville, you went to the Ronald McDonald House a lot, I thought. Yeah, so he's always been with people. So I think that maybe it's the causally, it's the other way around. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, you talk about how real and raw you get on that. I, I always appreciate people who do that so openly because it gives tacit uh, permission to other people to do that and to take their mental health seriously and to take their self-care seriously. Yeah. And I just think we need more examples of that, especially from people like, like you and people with platforms to say, you know, it's okay not to be okay and it's okay to, to seek help. There's nothing wrong with yeah. you for doing that, you know? And also, just most importantly, I always say at the end of every show is just be good to yourself. We're so hard on ourselves and we're not good looking enough. We're not good enough. We're not this. And I'm like, this is you. This is who you were created for a reason. You're out there for a reason. It's just like, you know, we only have one life as far as we know. Just be good to yourself. You know? I remember when I, when I, I listened to your podcast and I remember Zach Levi being in there and he was like, he, he was talking about the idea that so many billions and trillions of things had to happen in the universe for you to exist. Yeah. And you got to appreciate that. You are special. Yeah. Like, we all are. And I just, I get kind of chills when he, when he kind of said it that way. So, yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan of your podcast. Thanks, buddy. I love you. <laughs> he does. He listens to me. He'll go, dude, I really I loved your notes. conversation with this. Really great. And then other times he'll go, it was a little boring. I guess, kind of, <laughs> I guess it was kind of boring this time. It was good, but it was... Like, you had a hard time with that, guys. I could see you reaching. I just tell you are trying to push, get some stuff out of it. By the way, this is always like after it airs, so me, my notes don't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing I can but do. I just, Judd Apatow is this week, if you want to listen to Judd. So you can watch it on YouTube, subscribe, re write a review, and thank you. There you go. Well, uh, Tom, I have to say, I also loved uh, your work in Lucifer. Uh, um, what, what was it that uh, kind of spoke to you about that, to like get you back into that kind of comic book world there? 
Um, I, 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 I've been a fan of the show already. Um, I know someone who knew Lauren German very well and sort of called and was like, you know, what's it like, blah, blah, blah. And when I got there, I, 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 I thought it was a complete opposite of Clark. Yeah. Clark was always sort of, didn't have the information trying to figure it out where Pierce and, and he was sort of like ahead of everybody. So I thought that was cool, maybe a little more Lex-ish. Yeah. Um, and I got there, and Tom Ellis and Lauren, and it, it was such a cool, fun set. Like, let's have fun, but get the work done. And I just was like, I don't know, I, it, it, I felt very at home, and um, I just, it was just one of those things where you're like, this is gonna be fun, and let's go do it. Yeah. It was kind of that something.